So what we're looking here on this screen right now is the TIA software for Siemens which can be used to program up the PLCs uh, with various types of ladder functionality. Um, and the PLC program we're looking at is the program for the conveyor uh, which I just showed in the previous uh, clip there. Um, so the Siemens uh, new IoT range of PLCs and gateways come with the MQTT functionality in block format that can be dropped into PLC programs, um, thus enabling uh, MQTT functionality as a core uh, feature of the Siemens PLCs and the Siemens offerings for the automation network. So the LMQTT client block that we have here is basically the block that is configuring the MQTT uh, client for the PLC. In the case of the conveyor client, we're setting it up purely as a publisher. So it's uh, taking data in for the process and it's going to publish it. And it will publish it to the broker that's running on the IoT gateway also provided by Siemens. Now, if I bring up, you can see it here. If I bring it up, I'm currently subscribed into the IoT gateway using a program called Putty, and you can see some of the data that's being transferred by the PLC, um, just constantly sending a batch of 10 messages on various parameters around the process. If I close it out, it's very similar. Uh, what I've been using here is the Mosquito clients we've shown you in previous uh, video examples, uh, but the gateway itself is simply running a um, Debian or Linux based process so it comes with all the Mosquito stuff uh, that we've discussed in previous uh, lessons to date so it's running a Mosquito broker um, and it's running a and it has the ability to run Mosquito clients if you want to log in directly uh, through the putty interface and look at the data that's happening there uh, directly yourself so uh, what I was just doing there was subscribing to see the data that was coming from the PLC to the broker similarly to how any subscriber does it data gets sent there and we have this LMQTT client block which is um, taking its configurations from this uh, MQTT client uh, configuration block down here which we'll go through uh, shortly but it's basically getting configured with all the same types of parameters we looked at um, on our Windows examples earlier using the Mosquito and Mosquito clients it's just doing it in a PLC block format right and um, you can set your retain bits you can set your quality of service you can set uh, if it's going to be a publisher subscriber. In this case, we've set it to turn on uh, once every 10 seconds to send a publish message. That's why we're getting it in batch, so it batch to 10, but you need some sort of switch to activate the client um, to send a message. And you can do that depending on what your functionality uh, its requirements. Uh, we've done it using a clock, just because it's a good way to demonstrate it uh, for the purpose of a video. Um, if you go down, you have other um, parameters that we discussed about as well. You have last uh, will and testament payloads that you can send there. You send in the message length and stuff like that as well. You can set up your username and password for first level authentication. You can send a custom client ID if you wish. Um, you can send in your, your uh, payloads as well, your publish message payloads, and your receive message payloads. And then you have a bunch of status messages, status, status outputs of the uh, client block over here as well. So the configuration, I suppose, um, for all this is done using this MQTT client uh, DB2 block here. And we've put in all the requirements we, re we need um, from our PLC from an MQTT perspective. You have your quality of service, we set it to zero. Um, you can also look at your last will and testament messages. Uh, in here it's um, uh, an ASCII, but it's just basically saying the PLC has gone offline. Uh, is what it's telling you there. Um, the topic that you're subscribing to can be put in as well. The message you're sending gets is a dynamically updated uh, connection. Um, but everything you can do, your control and connect parameters, your output, all these other things can be put in here as well. Your client ID uh, and so on. So we're back in our uh, data block um, configuration here that we're using to feed into the MQTT client to be able to configure it. Um, so this is a simple data block that Siemens uh, provide, other um, uh, PLC providers will provide similar uh, functionality as well. Um, whether they all provide MQTT blocks, I guess, is uh, something that is um, on the verge of being rolled out by various PLC providers, Siemens are sort of leading the way in it, uh, but it is technology that's going to become more ubiquitous in the PLCs. 
uh, and understanding and how to use that, be it to get data out of the factory using MQTT interfaces or get data routed through the factory using the MQTT interface and uh, other um, protocols like OPC UA, uh, it, it's still going to be configured the same way. So um, if you remember when we're collecting, connecting from our Windows um, clients, uh, we have to specify some fairly specific um, parameters to be able to connect. Uh, and up here you have connection parameters that you can specify, uh, you can configure. The first two um, can go with defaults for generally, but the MQTT broker address is something that absolutely has to be correct because you have to be able to route the data to the right spot. And what we have here in this uh, data block here is a IP address that you can configure um, with the IP address of the uh, router you're trying to connect. So in our case, we have uh, the Siemens IoT gateway, and it's got an address of 192.168.1.24, uh, and that's what we've put in here. And we make sure we also specify that the port is 1883, because in this instance, we're not using TLS or certification uh, to connect to the broker. So we're using the unencrypted port. And the default for that for MQTT tends to be 1883. Now, the IoT gateway, as we've seen in a while, you can configure any port you want to use. We're using the default in this instance, and that's kind of the uh, standard um, out there to use the default ports. But it may, if you have multiple uh, brokers running or you have multiple uh, security requirements or whatever it might be. You may not use the default port all the time, um, but for now we can leave it at 1883. Uh, you have your TLS settings. Uh, if you do want to enable your certification um, and you can point, uh, say there's a broker cert and client certs available. So we'll talk more about TLS as it comes up, but you can enable the TLS and you can um, move certificates over onto the PLCs and onto the gateway that they can use for authentication. Other parameters that you have to have when you're connecting uh, from an MQTT perspective. The client ID, uh, here we're using a string and we're just calling it the Siemens client. Um, user and pass name and password are optional depending on how your broker is set up. Will topic is we're sending this uh, last will and testament to the topic devices offline. So if you were working this in a factory, you could understand which devices are active and which aren't uh, because when they disconnect and if they're disconnected from the broker for a certain period of time, they will send their last will and testament message, which could be PLC ID offline. So it's a way of keeping track of what's going on. We talked about a Q or, uh, QoS. In this instance, this client is set up to subscribe to or publish to test topic one. You could set up multiple client blocks if you want to subscribe or publish to multiple topics. Um, but each on each one, you would have to specify the topic that you're publishing or subscribing to. The message itself that's being sent is dynamically generated. Um, so a default message can go in there, but it's all zeros at the moment. But it's a dynamically generated message um, that can be sent up to the maximum allowed data. Uh, you have your retain flag. In this case, we set true. So it will, if the broker allows it, retain the last message. And if a client connects, send that message to it. Um, and since we're not receiving messages, we don't really care too much about what's going on in there. So that's how you configure the MQTT client using the PLC blocks. Uh, there's an MQTT client uh, uh, data block and you have an empty QTT client um, connection block. If we go back into our connection block right now. Uh, in main OB1. Again, as I mentioned, you have to activate these blocks, so it has to be enabled. And you have, to, in this case, we're pulsing it on to be able to send the messages. And when it comes on, it will send its messages, gathering the data from the various aspects inside. Um, and a lot of the work currently set up the way the MQTT uh, blocks are configured or programmed is that there's a lot of data manipulation required to be able to correctly send data and correctly receive data. And that's something as well we look at from the PLC perspective um, in the upcoming.